David Viscott, and welcome back. Uh, this show looks like this, it's going to end in a flourish. What do we have? Okay, we have Art on line 12, and his sexual interests have changed. Here we go, Art. Uh, good evening. How uh, old are you? I'm 36. What do you mean your sexual interests have changed? Well, I've been uh, involved in sadomasochism for many, many years, and uh, as a dominant. And uh, This is uh, heterosexual? Uh, yeah, yeah, primarily. I had been bi years ago, but because of AIDS, I restricted my activity to uh, heterosexual safe con contact. But um, I've, I'm really anxious right now, so please... I'm there. Okay. I mean, I don't want to make you anxious. I just want to know enough about this. I'm making myself anxious talking. Okay. Uh, Would you like me to talk? N well, I'll just... Anyway, I'm, I, I left um, my S&M associations a while back, and I terminated my uh, last relationship with uh, my last submissive female. And um, uh, I've, I've tried having sexual encounters with, you know, just normal male-female romantic sex, and I can't get an erection without the accoutrement and atmosphere of the domination, and, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Well, what was, what was the sort of domination you were involved in? Well, uh, bondage, uh, some pain inducement, um, a lot of different fantasies, uh, uh, a lot of this master-slave type stuff. I mean, I, you know, I don't know how graphic you want me to get, and I, I know we're on TV, so... Okay. I just want to know enough to know what... I've, I've, been, I've been in deep. Deep. Deep? Yeah. To the point where I started believing my... Fantasy? My, yeah. Um, when did this start? When did you first become fascinated with this? Uh, I started, first started... I was thinking about this. I first started having my fantasies when I was um, very, very young. How young? Like four or five. And what were the fantasies of uh, dreaming of tying women up in the women I'd see in picture books, children's books. I would fantasize about capturing them, tying them up. And doing what? Uh, well, nothing. I mean, I didn't, I didn't just, understand what intercourse was. Yeah, but just tying them up. Tying them up and touching them and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, and what in your own life at the, in the, when you were four paralleled the emotions that were uh, depicted in your fantasies? Um, you wanted to tie anyone else up, not necessarily to have sex with them or touch them, but I, I, if, if that did, you know, if I did have actual feelings about real people, I don't remember them. Um, was there anyone that you felt you were out of control with, uh, who was mastering well, you? My my parents. How? Well, my father, my father didn't molest me. He did. Yes. Sir. How? Well, he sodomized me. When you were how old? Uh, when I was about four or five. And do you remember that? I remember vague images of it, and it came up a few years ago when I was going through therapy. Okay. And he was on top of you? Uh, he... I remember him, yeah, yeah, that's holding, basically how I remember it. Holding you down with his weight. Right. Making you feel... Yeah, helpless. Helpless. And a, that position must have been terrifying. Uh, yeah. And it led to fantasies of you wanting to be in the position of the tormentor, at least yeah. not being the tormented. Right. That's what all this means. Yeah, I, I've kind of picked that up, and I'm just at the point where I want to, I want a better life for myself, and I want to, I want to experience a normal love relationship with a woman, and that's sort of the whole deal, you know. And like I say, I, I'm not, I'm not able to perform without this other stuff. At all? No, I'm not, and I almost. I almost don't have a sexual interest in women without these other things going on. Even though I do like women as friends, and I have, you know, female friends, what have you. Yeah, this is interesting because what it really feels like is that this isn't sexual at all. Well, I, could, I can understand that. Okay, tell me what that understanding rings in your head. It's more a power thing. It's a, a feeling of, of control, mastery, power. Well, under the power, it's a wish for power thing. Yeah, okay. But underneath that is the feelings that you were talking about when you were starting to talk to me. Terror. Right. right. It's a feeling of terror that you're trying to master. Okay. Okay? Okay. When you were sodomized, do you, 
it was painful. Yes, it was. And when you cried out, what did your father say? Um, I remember all I remember my father. My mother was in the hospital at the time, and I remember my father basically threatening me, telling me not to say anything. That's that's you know, like I say, it's all pretty cloudy and murky, and I don't remember all all much too much more than that. Does he live? My father's been dead for many, many years. Since when? Uh, 1972. How'd he die? Uh, alcoholism. So he was probably drunk at this time, too. Yeah, he was a chronic alcoholic. And mother? Uh, my mother was um, was? borderline schizophrenic. Was? Was. She's gone, too. So what do you think about yourself with this kind of heritage? Uh, well, I think I'm very, you know, I've, I've gone through this ACA and all this kind of thing, and you know, I, I sort of know the dynamic that's going on here that I'm trying, like I say, you know, some of the things that you said I'd agree with. Um, I just don't know what to do with myself at this point. I mean, I, I don't even blame them anymore. And I, I'm, I, I think I've worked through a lot of the anger at them. Maybe I haven't. I don't know, you know. But. Well, well, I think there's a place of forgiveness that you haven't come to yet. Pardon me? I, there's a place, interesting, what you should not hear would be the thing that was the most important statement. There's a place of forgiveness you have not come to yet. I see. And that me and forgiveness, let me explain. Forgiveness is letting go of the hurt. Okay. You carry the hurt around with you, and because you cannot express it, you turn the hurt into anger, and then you try to control the anger with all this controlled sexuality. That's the motivation for all this. Okay. Now, what just re something clicked? What was that? I I've just come to the realization that I think that my forgiveness towards them has been more surface than than from the heart. And uh, and so you're acting out the vengeance of the of of the terror by still requiring these sadomasochistic activities. Yeah. Okay. Because in order to have an erection, a man needs to be able to express some anger without ambivalence. And what you do is you put yourself into a situation of domination so that there is a relieving of the guilt and a relieving of the helplessness and powerlessness. Uh, okay. You understand what you yeah, what you're doing? It's, it's, it's hitting home. It's hitting home. Tell me what's clicking. It's just what you're saying is, is, is making sense to me. It's, you know. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, yeah. This should be a very bizarre call. Yeah, I know. It but, but, it's, but it isn't. It's just yeah. very ordinary. You were a child who was abused, who now, in order to feel better about himself, abused other people, and in that abusing, ended up feeling so guilty that you could not enjoy yourself or feel good about yourself or believe you were deserving. Right. What's the next step? Next step is forgiving them. Well, I mean, are they dead? What do I do? Well, it's time to write letters to them. I... You know, if you want to write a letter of forgiveness, what you do is you write a letter to the parent. You state the hurt that you suffered. You indicate that now the hurt is gone. But you indicate how you were hurt, why it hurt, why you kept it in, and the consequences of so doing. And you write this in as clear language as you possibly can muster. And then you take the letters to the to the grave, and you read the letter aloud. Wait a while, sitting at the grave site, and then crumple them into a ball and light a match to them. And as the the, the letters burn on the grave site into ashes, think of the message that's being left there forever, and and break up the ashes with the heel of your foot on the grave and say, I forgive you for all the hurt that you caused me, and I leave my hurt here. And you'll know that over the years, those ashes will just sink down into that place, and the remnants of your hurt and anger will be left there, and they'll no longer be part of you. It's a symbolic riddance. I see. I see. And it works, but take at least a month to write the letter so that you make sure it has all of your pain in it, because the object here is to be free and not carry this hurt along with you.